The Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba, they set out from the city of Medina in the state of Ihram with the remarkable, the noble intention of performing Umrah, visiting the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and performing the great act of Umrah. As they're going and proceeding towards the city of Mecca to go and perform Umrah, they're blocked and obstructed by the people of Mecca, saying, we cannot allow you to, uh, to enter and to proceed to Mecca. Rather, they send some people to sit down and negotiate a truce and a treaty with the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ, when, see, when he sees them coming, he says that they seem like they want to negotiate. If they are willing to negotiate today, I will agree to terms and I will sit down to negotiate. If they want to make peace, I shall make peace today. When they sit down though, things become very interesting. They start proposing terms that seem to be very lopsided, very favorable to them and very unfair to the Muslims. Not one, but multiple major terms all seem to be very disrespectful, very inconsiderate and unfair to the Muslim side. And if this is meant to be a peace treaty, a pact, what kind of a pact is, serves only one side? And so the Sahaba feel very uneasy. The Prophet Sallallahu in that moment is very calm and very peaceful and he's proceeding on forward, he's continuing with the proceedings. And the Prophet ﷺ is very calm and very even killed. Umar who is a very emotional person, he's becoming very, very uneasy. And this is becoming extremely challenging for him. First of all, these are the people who have murdered us, tortured us, killed us, attacked us, made, it, made our lives so difficult for nearly two decades. Why are we sitting down to have any type of negotiation with these people? What rights, what decency have they shown that we should sit and talk to them? Number two, we're in ihram. We just simply peacefully want to go and perform Umrah. They don't own the Kaaba. And they're not letting us go forward. It's frustrating. It's infuriating. Thirdly, then the terms are completely lopsided, which just seems like a slap in the face. And he's just beside himself. And he's not sure on how to process this moment and this situation. And he looks at the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ is just very calm, cool, collected. Just taking care of business. And he eventually goes to the Prophet ﷺ. And he has a mini outburst and he says, O oh, Messenger of God, why are we talking to these people? Aren't we right and they're wrong? We're good and they're bad. Like is that not how simple and clear cut the situation is? And the Prophet says, absolutely, O Omar. But I am the Messenger of God. Allah will continue to guide me. He has always guided me and He, was, he will continue to guide me. I need you to trust me. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that I calmed down after that and I realized that I should trust the Prophet And he said that no sooner did that moment pass but I immediately regretted you know, just having that outburst and kind of losing sight of what was important in that situation. And what was so important in that situation? That sometimes... I might not be able to understand exactly what's happening and why it's happening the way that it is. But it's very important to have faith and to have trust in those moments. We all deal with challenges, difficulties, adversities, moments that we can't really make sense of that we're not sure about. But it's very important in those moments not to lose our faith and our trust. That we put our faith and trust in Allah and in our deen, and we have to know that it's going to work out at the end of the day. And that Allah will only do what's best for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us conviction and faith and trust 
and the ability to be able to put our faith and trust in Him, no matter how challenging, difficult, and adverse the situation may become. Amen.